I'm gonna choke him out, I'm gonna apply a submission hold. Make him quit. Help him up, send him home. I'm back, I'm back. Cause you dumb. That's why your hair I'm is real. receding. Your brain is toxic, your hair is receding, bro. I'm gonna ice that motherfucker, watch. I'm gonna ice that motherfucker. I'm gonna ice that motherfucker. I'm back, I'm back. What up, y'all? I'm Agno TV. I'm back. Yeah, so we got, we had Tiafima Lopez versus Sander Martin. And my prediction was that Tiafima Lopez was going to mop Sander Martin. All right, all right, I know, I know, I know what y'all are thinking. Oh, Tiafima had a hard time, blah, blah, blah. Look, like Mayweather says, numbers don't lie, okay? If you look at the CompuBox numbers, for Mike Garcia versus Sandra Martin. Mike Garcia didn't even land as much as he landed on Earl Spence compared to when he fought Sandra Martin. Look, Sandra Martin is a one trick pony. Okay? I expected Sandra Martin to fight differently, like he fought Gidget and a few other guys. I watched their fights. So, unless y'all have watched his other fights, y'all will know what's up. But. Sander Martin fought like a bitch. Like Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz, if they fought him in a boxing match, they, 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 or they probably, they're probably they probably saying he's a bitch. He ran. He straight up ran. Y'all know he did. Now, Mayweather's different. Mayweather can fight going backwards and get a decision. But you can't fight a top guy like that and let him outpoint you. Tia Fimo outpointed Sander Martin. He outpointed him. 100%. 100%. I'll point it out. Look at the copy box numbers. Look at the punches landed. Tifimo basically doubled it almost every round. I think there's a few rounds that it was like 8, 9, 7, 8, something like that. But the rest of the rounds, Tifimo had him. He, out, he beat him at his own game. Tifimo beat him at his own game. Tifimo should have done more. Um, I'm really blaming a lot of this on who he, he surrounds himself with. Okay, and I didn't know that he was back with his wife. When I saw that, look, when I saw her, right away I was like, that's it. That's one of the things right there, okay? Like, I can look at a girl, and I can tell what, what type of girl she is just by looking at her. Straight up. I promise you. I'm the best. I'm one of the best at it. I can look at somebody and tell you what type of person they are. Seriously. Not judging. I can just, from experience, I just know how it is. Now, another thing is... His dad had a good game plan, okay? It was decent. But how can you not be ready for Sandra Martin? A one-trick pony's counter, um, counter check uh, was a right, the right hook. How can you not be ready for that? Huh? How can you not be ready for that? And then they even sent a guy over to tell, to ask Tia Fimo Lopez Sr. about that. And he said, yeah, he's getting caught with it, but I'm more worried about my son doing something else, you know, going to the body or getting lower or something like that. And I was thinking, man, they're, they're trying to help you out. You're not even listening. That was the only shot that he was getting. He was getting, getting hit with the uh, counter left that, that a southpaw usually hits everybody with. If you notice, do you think would get hit by that very much at all? If not, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Maybe once or twice. But so a little is to blame on his dad. Now, Tia Fimo also should have made adjustments. And he made slight adjustments, but his slight adjustments were only to impress his father. Okay? He was sticking to his dad's game plan. And I don't think that was a good thing. Um, that wasn't the best to Ifimo. I think he played a lot of people. You know? He did look in shape. He did look in shape. That's another thing. I've always said, even in my other videos, I'm worried about his how, how big he is. He's not a true 140-pounder yet. Is he making it work? Yeah, he is. Can he go too far? Maybe, but it's going to be super hard. I think with the good nutrition, he can make 135 and dominate at 135 again. But it takes hard work. It takes you got to dedicate yourself because he is definitely a 135er fighting at 140 right now. I guarantee you after that fight, 
when he weighed himself, because I know he weighed himself, I know how fighters are, I was a fighter once, and I used to fight at a similar weight class, and if I was too big or too small, I would know, even when I did catch weights, I would know, I would weigh myself after my fight, and I guarantee you, T. Filma Lopez was about 137 after that fight, 100%, 100%, mark my words, I guarantee you, if y'all were to ask him what he weighed after the fight, he would say about 135, 137, guarantee you, promise you, I know how it works. So he is not big enough for 140, but he's making it work. He's good. He's good enough. And look, that's the second backflip that he's missed. He didn't land flush, you know. Um, and I, I really think it has to do a lot with him being drained, being a father, being with that toxic girl of his. She's definitely toxic, 100%. And his dad needs to make a change. Like, he needs to listen to other people. He needs to bring other people in and let them train Tiafimo Lopez, you know, straight. So I'm blaming this a lot on his trainer, his dad, and him being with his wife. I know it sounds bad, but it's definitely a toxic relationship. I understand that he's trying to make his relationship, his marriage work, but look, that's why a lot of fighters like Crawford and guys like that, they get away from that. They'll go to train you know, and not see their family for whatever, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, and they mention that, you know, they've been, I've been without my family. I was like Tiafimo. I When I fought, I stayed with my family, and it drained the shit out of me. It drained the shit out of me. I had my two boys, my wife, and it drained the shit out of me, straight up. So, I know how it is, and that's definitely it. Him being in a toxic relationship, you know, which I was in as well, and, you know, it goes both ways, and, and then his dad not making adjustments from round to round, um, and then Tiafimo not, look, when your trainer tells you to do something and it's not working, they're not the ones in there, so you got to take it upon yourself as an elite athlete, former undisputed champion, to make changes in the ring when you're getting hit like that. Now, for the knockdowns. Sander Martin, like I said, is a one-trick pony. He has that move, that one move, and that's it. That's all you really got to worry about. He has nothing else. He wasn't letting his hands go like he did against Mike Garcia. He was not. No, he wasn't. Why? Because he was scared to get hit by Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo was too fast and hits too hard, even at 140. He saw his power. I don't care what Mike Algeri or whatever Algeri says, whatever his name is. Um, he has power, enough power to knock anybody out. And if you saw in the 10th round... Teofimo Lopez was doing really great when he was mad. But he should have done that in after, probably around the seventh round. He should have started let, letting go. He wasn't going to get knocked out by him. Okay? That punch that Sander Martin throws is just a veteran trick. He does it. He doesn't do it to knock you out. He does it to score a point, cuff you, and push you off balance. A lot of the times those, those are off balance and behind the head. Definitely. 100%. Look at him. Look at, look at where he punched him. Um, one was at the top of the head, kind of towards the back, you know, and Tiafimo was definitely off balance. With the southpaw, you can't lunge in like that because your legs will get tangled up. Now, for the headbutt, it wasn't a headbutt. It was a clash of heads. Now, the referee and all of them are told that, to watch for that, because when you fight, when a orthodox fighter fights a southpaw, 100%, their legs are going to get tangled, and the referee is supposed to watch for that, and headbutts are a lot more common because their heads go opposite of the line and they'll have a clash of heads, like what happened. And that was 100% not Tiafimo's fault. He didn't headbutt him. No. Santa Martin rushed in with his fucking face going at Tiafimo and got his nose broken. That's his fault. If anybody's, you know, if you're going to blame somebody for a clash of heads, you know, he's the one who lunged in with his face, face first. That's all I got to say. Um, Tia Fimo was not done, but he needs to, like I said, you are who you surround yourself with. And he needs to make some, make some changes in his uh, management or training, you know, management too, for, for getting paid. Because I know he tricked a lot of people for us thinking he was ready for Sandra Martin. And uh, I think Tia Fimo right now is thinking more about supporting his family and just making money. And that was kind of messed up, but, you know. 
he's an entertainer, so he's doing what he has to do to make money for his family. I get that, but retrospect, I just mm. T.O. If you're watching this, bro, you gotta listen to people. You gotta make adjustments in the ring. You're too talented. You're too you're too gifted, you know. And that's what I have to say on that, you know. Uh, but yeah. That's all I gotta say, guys. Click like, subscribe, uh, comment, and I answer to all comments. That's my stick. And if you want to donate, it's my cash app. It's money sign Magno44. Peace, y'all. War Tia Fimo. Let's go. Who's up next?